Hello again and welcome to Rough Cut Film Review. Um, before I start, um, you can now contact me on uh, roughcutfilmreview at gmail.com. So if you've got any uh, feedback or any correspondence of any kind, if you've got any ideas for, for you know, podcasts you might like to see. Um, this is going to be a quick synopsis of some documentary films that I've seen through Netflix. Um, it's not exhaustive, but it's um, I think there's an interesting mixed bag there. Um, and as I've said before, it's purely the fact that it's difficult for me to get to the cinema so you know this I'm working with what I've got um, I've also mentioned a few times Netflix uh, I don't know if there's any kind of legal issues with that I can't imagine there are but if there are you know other uh, streaming services are available um, for example Love Film uh, I've also got a subscription to Love Film but to be perfectly honest I think the the, the new releases on there are, are pretty unimpressive um, so I, I, I do tend to go with Netflix so anyway here we go with a bit of film reviews so hopefully this is nice and zippy and uh, pretty quick fire. So the first one I want to talk about is a documentary called The King of Kong. Um, it's about a very likeable outsider called Steve Weeb, uh, who is against a strange narcissist called Billy Mitchell, uh, not the bloke from EastEnders, or they look quite similar. Um, it's a surprisingly fun documentary, actually, about who can get the highest score at Donkey Kong, the original, you know, very old uh, arcade game. Um, there's, there's, there's actually been, I've noticed quite a lot of people talking about the two main characters, Steve Weeb and Billy Mitchell. Um, from the film, to be fair, it looks like Steve Weeb is very likeable, but uh, it looks like he's a pretty lousy father and uh, he's fairly, you know, uh, disinterested. And uh, Billy Mitchell is a complete prat. So it's good fun. It's the kind of thing, you know, have a couple of beers and just go with it. And it's it's, it's a good laugh. Uh, next up is Not A Good Laugh, uh, which is south of the border. Um, it's a Oliver Stone documentary. It's fairly new. It's uh, on American foreign policy at large and its failure in the Americas uh, with a focus on the Hugo Chavez's Venezuela. Now, Stone has actually got a point that American foreign policy uh, recently has been fairly disastrous. I mean, all over the world, but certainly in South America and their sort of brand of interventionalism has been incredibly anti-democratic um, and it's you know America has made itself enemies by you know by interfering however um, Chavez himself has got an absolutely horrific record on human rights uh, and this is completely just uh, completely swept under the carpet They're just not raised at all in the film um, Caracas is actually now one of the most dangerous cities in the world because you know uh, with, you know, Chavez implicitly, you know, involved murders are just absolutely going through the roof. So, you know, it, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. I don't agree with everything about the documentary. In fact, you know, I, I disagree with large bits of it. But having said that, what I do like about Oliver Stone is whether he's making a documentary or he's making one of his feature films, he's very much a man of conviction. So even when he's wrong and he frequently is wrong and he tends to ramble and go in a, in a strange direction uh, I think he's interesting and I, I, I do respect him actually but you know, all in all not about documentary um, so uh, next up is the Dungeon Masters, uh, now I was actually looking forward to this, um, but it was very ho-hum there's uh, some strange people who play Dungeons and Dragons they're filmed, um, the film's got no narrative to speak of and there's no real point to it either, so they're not really trying to say anything, It's just so it's just some edited footage of Talking Heads really um, there's a couple of interesting people on there but it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't feel like you've learned anything new, so I was actually looking forward to a documentary about this strange subsect of people that I don't really have no impression of or you know well, I have impressions of but you know I'd like to see more into their world um, but this film doesn't give it so there we go uh, next up is a film called Project Nim. Um, it was very well regarded on its release. Um, so this is Californian hippies raise a chimp as a human in the 1970s. Um, they make two crucial mistakes. One is that this is not a proper scientific experiment. So that they are not recording anything properly. They're not documenting anything properly. They're just making it up as they go along. So, you know, there they, they really is little scientific use you can you can take from this the other problem is that unfortunately they picked a male chimp which was in hindsight inevitably going to cause some sort of problems so it, it's a really unhappy story in that it sits really uncomfortably with you as a, as a human um, uh, it's a very very sad story about making a, a beast into a man and then it really being neither um, and and sitting sort of one 
you know, almost one foot in both worlds, but really being deeply unhappy in either um, and just being completely uncomfortable with itself. Um, and, you know, just the, the feeling you get for what people will do to something or, you know, uh, just as sort of a cold indifference or lack of planning. or it, it's, it's a very, very sad story. It's a very, very well-made documentary and I'd recommend it if you're not depressive. Uh, speaking of another very sad documentary that I would re- very much recommend if you're not depressive um, is Dreams of a Life. Um, it's an incredibly sad and tragic story of a lady living in North London who sort of falls through the cracks. She just dies of natural causes and she's not found for years. She's got a family. She's got lots of siblings. Um, but for whatever reason, no one actually really tracks her down. Um, and, you know, living in a, a city of 10 million people, as she does, she's not a shut in. You know, she's got a job. She's got a life. She's very charming. Um, you know, people did care about her and somehow uh, she falls through. So it's a fascinating documentary. It's the kind of thing you see, well, that can't possibly be a true story. Um, and then, you know, you hear all the, the details of her friends and family and, um, fascinating stuff and uh, very sad and again much like Project Nim it's it leaves you with this really nasty nagging feeling um, that uh, you know fundamentally us humans aren't necessarily that great but it's a great documentary so the last documentary I want to talk about is Enron the smartest guys in the room uh, very much a cautionary tale it's a documentary on how Enron which was you know being feted by Alan Green's Ban. It was the toast of Wall Street. Uh, it, you know, went from being one of the best regarded, most forward-thinking, most intelligent American companies. It was. It was supposed to represent this new generation of companies coming through. Um, and uh, how it was a spectacular failure and how it hurt a lot of people. Uh, most interesting, really, is how they got away with what was essentially fraud for so long. Um, of you know, just and, and the people who actually were implicit in that. So it was whether it was the regulators, it was you know, there's, there's talk of the Bush, you know, being them being very very close to the Bush administration. Um, and then beyond that, you've got the regulators, you've got the the financial industry, Wall Street itself. And so all of these people, accountants, they're complicit in the lie, and actually their their massive accountancy firm was brought down with them. Um, so all of this stuff, so theoretically, theoretical money was kind of shooting around the place, um, and its share price just kept going up and up and up, you know, on the back of reported figures which just weren't believable, and yet everyone, because it was Enron, everyone believed them. Um, so it, again, it's a very good documentary. Um, on spectacular, you know, human failure. And um, yeah, I mean, I wonder, just pure speculation, I wonder how much this will uh, resonate with, uh, you know, Facebook in a couple of years when there's this, you know, concept of, you know, this massive company uh, without any sort of, has never turned a profit, you know, never turned a profit. It's very uncertain how they're actually ever going to make a profit or how it's going to be financially viable. But people buy into it and it's just, you know, the balloon fills with air and uh, one day it pops. So uh, a very interesting documentary and uh, you can ignore my comments about uh, Facebook should you choose. So yeah, just to sum up then. So uh, as, as I said at the beginning, you can now contact me on Rough Cut Film Review at gmail.com um, there were some cracking documentaries in there um, so I'd very much recommend Enron Smartest Guys in the Room I'd very much recommend Project Nim and I'd certainly recommend Dreams of a Life um, so yeah thanks ever so much for listening and uh, more reviews will be coming soon